and the secondary data is something which has got a lot of distinctive meaning altogether. Secondary data is typically looked into when you don't have time to do the research. There is a lot of data that's available with the local government, that is the state government as well as the central government. There are many a times where I might have done a research using some statistical method. Good morning and welcome to the session 4 in unit 2 where we are going to talk about in business research method the secondary sources of data in Indian context particularly related to our country. Why? Because secondary data refers to the data that's connected and collected by the secondary party rather than the user himself. So we have understood this context very, very clearly that it is not the user, but it is being collected by somebody else who is trying to work on this data. Now, the common sources of secondary data for social science include statements, data collected by government agencies, organizational documents and the other factors. Now, specifically for the Indian context, why I want to tell about the secondary data is that now the secondary data is something which is very, very powerful in nature. And the secondary data is something which has got a lot of distinctive meaning altogether. Now here what happens is that when you look into the secondary data, many governmental agencies, many planning agencies are involved in terms of providing value to the secondary data. But what happens in the long run is that people get completely relied on the secondary data and we don't stretch myself or anybody into that factor of primary research. So that's why when you start looking into the secondary data, it's an easy accessible source for most of us to do this particular kind of research. Now the second thing is that because it is the second hand piece of information, they are not gathered from the source as primary data. Now secondary data is just a collection. So it can be taken from different stands from different sources altogether and they can be put together as a part of a bigger information. Now, let's say for example, if you are going to do a research on Indian culture and diversity altogether, then what is going to happen is that when you go and search for a secondary data related to this particular uh, uh, factor or particular research altogether, you will be surprised to see that there are so many people who have filled in the data in different aspects, in different values altogether. So you will be able to get the information in bits and pieces, which is not something that is suggested at all. But then uh, what happens here is that because the factor is like the topic is like that you are not able to go and do a primary research. So what you tend to do, what you intend to take here is that you intend to take all the information that's available on the website, on the governmental sites, and then you put it together. So secondary data is usually when the time of enquiry is compact and exactness of the enquiry can be settled to a certain extent. A very, very important statement for all of us to understand. Secondary data is typically looked into when you don't have time to do the research. Secondly, it is not more about the accuracy matter. You just want to know about it. Now, for example, if you just come to know about the diversity and culture of India, not to the accurate level, you just want to know what is the overall factor, then you don't have to worry. You can just take a secondary data, read through it, understand it, and then you can write your own and you can just publish it across. But in that sense, what is very, very important here is that as a researcher, you might not be probably really satisfied with the secondary data because you have not done any primary research there. You have just gone through the systems. You've just gone through the factors. You just rushed through the data that was available to you and you have taken it forward. So in that sense, I would always say that secondary data will not have that exactness. It is not accurate to the last level as far as possible. However, the secondary 
data can be gathered from different sources, namely the published and the unpublished sources here. So what happens here is that you will get a published source and you will also get an unpublished sources also. So which means to say when I talk about this in particular to Indian context, there are several organizations where you talk about the uh, published source altogether and we also talk about the unpublished sources here. Now, the published sources, as we are talking about, starts usually from the printed factor. The public uh, articles of local bodies and the state governments that comes into picture. Why this is important for us to know? When you want to understand something particular to the demographics, to the language, culture, religion, trends and practices. There's a lot of data that's available with the local government, that is the state government, as well as the central government. Now these datas are archived under the proper authority so that anybody can go further and have a complete idea about what is happening, how it is happening, what are the different sources, how do we go and publish that data. So there is, you know, when, when I talk about the information factor altogether, yes, it is available in the form of published data from the government as well as from the non-governmental bodies. Next thing is the statistical synopsis census records reports that have been issued by different departments. Now when you go to the local developmental authorities or to the census board of India, the statistical institute, all these kind of organizations have got huge amount of data which is published about the population. It publishes about how the people are living, what are the terms and conditions, what are their salary. There's so many things about the age, height, weight and and other demographic factors which have been published and printed by the government official statements and publications by the of the foreign governments also so when you talk about imf when you talk about world bank or when you talk about a particular government data of a country they are also secondary data for us publication and reports of the chambers of commerce financial institutions and things. So when we talk about the FICI, that is the Federation of Indian Chambers of Commerce or the CII, or when we talk about the uh, organizations which are involved in terms of commerce and business, all of them will have their own published source of resource, which can be used as a secondary data altogether. Followed by, we also go into, in terms of magazines, journals and periodical, there are many kinds of magazines that are available in India, which actually helps people to understand how things are going, what are all the different factors, how it is happening and all those methods. So in that sense, I would always say that magazines, periods, uh, periodicals and journals are also one of the most important factors through which you will be able to get a whole lot of data. And if you look into organization like Central Statistical Organization, the National Sample Survey Organization, these are all the organizations which have their own values in terms of looking into the humongous amount of data, the huge amount of data that they have as a resource, as a repository, which talks about the Indian states, the union territories, the demographic factors and so many other related issues. And of course, the reports that have been published by research scholars, economics and bureaus and other factors. So these are all uh, some of a very, very rich resource of data that we need to understand, that we need to follow. Why? Because these data are needed in terms of the publication factors altogether. Followed by the unpublished source. This is a very, very important topic. Why? Because there are many a times where I might have done a research using some statistical method, using some values, which is obtained from unpublished resource. These are not available directly for the hands of the public or for the people. So I will not be able to go and give the root cause for here. So that's why I call this as unpublished references. Some of the major unpublished sources from which the secondary data can be gathered are the research works conducted by teachers, professors, 
and professionals. Most of them conduct their own kind of research. They are engrossed in their own ideology and methodology of working. But then those kind of work is always not published in the market. It is not always known to everybody. So what happens is that this data still remains hidden. This is an unpublished data altogether. The records that are maintained by private and business enterprise. So even when you look at small companies, small organizations, they also have their own data of manufacturing, of the kind of process, the technology they have used, their vision, their ideology, their business opinions. But these data are not published in any of the website or any of the books. And statistics that are maintained by different agencies, both at state and at the central level, which has not been revealed to the public because it's not easily accessible, it's not been told. But then these data is available for us for the further research. So these are all the factors of the unpublished data. With this, I come to the end of this particular session. I hope and believe that the session was of a great help and resource to you. In the upcoming session, we will be talking more about the research factor in terms of the primary data observation and the survey method. Until then, stay tuned, stay blessed and stay enlightened forever. Thank you once again for joining me today on this wonderful session.